And shalom, shalom, welcome family to H2HDI. My name is Elder Joshua Malara, here to bring you and here to help you connect and how to stay in tune with the triune. And if you wonder, want to know what in tune means, it means you are becoming sound doctrine, sound word with the Father. There is a sound that the Father is trying to hear from his sons, hear from his daughters. But yet, if you're not in tune with the scriptures, if you're not in tune with his sound doctrine, if you're not in tune to hear, it's like a tuning fork. You hit it and you hear a ding. The Father's trying to hear you speak his word, regurgitate, murder, murmur, not murder, murmur, uh, the same scriptures that was already laid before the foundations of the world but, world, but unveiled within you this day. The reason why we don't have that today and the Father's trying to hear who's going to represent my name, who's going to represent my statues, my decrees, my laws, my ordinances that I have already uh, laid in the book of Revelation but yet unveiled in Genesis. And the funny thing about that was I said to myself in a... Uh, Apostle Robert Gonzalez and Virgie Gonzalez uh, exhorted me yesterday or the day before because my soul and my mind were harboring things from the realm of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but did not come into the realm of rewiring or redirecting my paths into the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Why couldn't we say his name, the Lord or God? Well, when you begin to research why is because we've been led away from the tree of life and be rewired into the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's why the tree of knowledge of good and evil has God and Lord. But if you begin to hear and hearken yourself to hear the Father, He's already saying to you, no, 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 no. You're my son. You're my daughter. I called you out before the foundations of the world. I inscribed my name written on your forehead, and now it's your choice, your responsibility, and your matter to allow me to be the king of your heart. Will you circumcise the foreskin of your heart in order for Yahuwah to be the king and ruler in your heart today? I know I want to because... In exor exor uh, extortion, excuse me, I'm in exhortion. What it does is that it helps to sharpen that uh, that dullness in your being, and you begin to realize, oh, the Father's trying to make me ascend into His presence, ascend into the holy of holies. So now, if you begin, if you go to the book of Luke, and the reason why I'm saying this is because remember. As Apostle Robert Gonzalez has said in previous Sabbath messages, there are believing believers and non-believing believers. Well, what does that mean? Believing believers are those that believe uh, that they read the scriptures and they had a, a small experience with the anointing to believe that God or Yahuwah is real. And then you have non-believing believers, which are those that go to the church, the building, and still call themselves the church, still call themselves the building, and still see that they do believe God, but to a certain extent. Now, hear me out. If we don't allow ourselves to pick up our cross and wear it every day and die to ourselves daily, we cannot be the disciples of Yeshua. If you have gone back to our past Sabbath message of Gen uh, from Genesis to Revelation and everything in between, you begin to see yourself that there are areas in your life and I'm speaking for myself too, that you haven't pressed in to believe the scriptures. You haven't been able to press into uh, the understanding of revelation that Yeshua was already hidden in this, uh, the Father since John 1.1, 1, 1, but yet it was revelated and illuminated in John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. And let's turn there right there. I got to give you scripture because I understand it's good to quote it, but it's better to go to the scriptures and speak it out. Because there is a particular key factor that the Father is trying to give you and I this day. Genesis, or not Genesis, excuse me. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with Yahuwah, and the Word was Yahuwah. He was in the beginning with Yah. All, verse 3, all things were made through Him, and without Him nothing that was made. Nothing was made that was made, excuse me. Verse 4, In him was life, 
and the life was the light of men. And now if you go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, you begin to see Bereshith. And what I did in my Bible is I scratched out the words in the beginning and I put Bereshith to know that in the Father's house there was first the Father and then the Son. And then it says, Yahuwah created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the spirit of Yahuwah was hovering over the waters. And in some translation it says, hovering over the face of the waters. Now, if you begin to personalize and uh, see the scriptures as the earth, you, be you are the earth that the Father has already established his word and impregnated his word in you. It is James chapter 1, verse 21. It is the engrafted word which is able to save the soul. But how do we do that first? We put away all, sup, uh, super, all filthiness and superfluidity, if I'm saying that correctly, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save the soul. But if you go to the... And, uh, let me turn to Luke chapter 14, verse 27. And this one was hit me because today I work and the day before I was listening to the message, just broken because I said, Father, if I failed you and I have failed Yahuwah, I repent and I understand and I'm coming forth to hear you. And I'm publicly making it known to everyone on in tune with the triune. Because if I don't teach you this stuff and not only be transparent with you, then I become like somebody that just has a facade of saying, you got to repent. You got to do this. Oh, I'm a sinner saved by grace through faith. Hear me out. I'm not, we're not trying to have a facade here. We're just people here in H2HDI where we just keep it really blunt, simple, and to the point. We tell the scriptures based off of what we have gone through in life. And then we allow ourselves to express who the Father is by our personality for you to encounter him. The Father wants to encounter you and says, I got goodness for you. I got treasures for you that you don't know yet. Can you just come hither? Can you come up higher? Can you come up to the altar, from the brazen altar to the brazen laver, and then from the uh, altar of incense into the altar where you encounter Yahuwah into the Holy of Holies, and you alter your position of who you were because when you enter into the Holy of Holies, there's going to be a process. You got to go through the doors, the five pillars, then you got to go through the table of showbread, the menorah, the altar of incense, and then there's an eight inch thick veil. But before, that's for you to get in into the Holy of Holies. But those are types and shadows of things that we are to walk in and walk through. We're not there to stay in the outer court with believing believers or non-believing believers. We are to ascend. The Hebrew word for ascend is aliyah. We are to ascend higher into the Holy of Holies. And as we and as we go into the Holy of Holies, that's where we alter our position in seeing ourselves in Yahuwah. Because remember, Yahuwah was already in you. He's already been there before the foundations of the world. See, even in darkness and thick darkness cannot comprehend the light because Yahuwah was already there. So whatever dark thoughts that you have that you think is like, oh, nobody knows it. You know, my mom doesn't know it. My dad doesn't know it. No, Yahuwah allowed you to have those thoughts so then you can understand who he is, where he comes in your quiet time, where he comes in your spare time where it's you and him and he says, I know those thoughts. I was the one that gave them to you. I know exactly how you think. I know exactly who you are. I know you. Why? Because I knitted you in my your mother's womb when you were still from per, uh, preception to perfection. And the reason why I'm, I'm jumping all that from preception or conception to perfect perception and then to perfection is because I want to illustrate to you that the Father knows you. He just wants to see you come up higher. But as you come up higher, there are some weights in your own being that you have to you have to drop a little bit. Those are the weights that easily beseech us in order for us to understand, oh, this was the weight. Okay, Father, I repent because I did not come to the fullness, gnosko, to know you, idio, pro-gnosko, to come to the fullness of knowing you. 
I don't know about you, but I know my prayer is, Father, I want to know you, represent you, desire you, and seek you. That's our goal is to know the Father in that arena. And I had a couple more <laughs> verses uh, here, but I think the Father just took me on a whole another path because anytime we research and we study, the Father just says, okay, now that you have done that, I want to intervene and speak on your behalf. So when he does that, it's better for ourselves, our own nature, our own soulish realm to shh, quiet ourselves and let him speak. It's simple as that. The reason why we need to repent is because we're drawing back. If we don't repent in our lives, hear me out. If we don't repent from our lives in areas of our lives, when we break bread with carnal people, soulish people, even people who uh, live for their own will, if we begin to break bread with them, we're going to have attributes of that kind of nature. We don't want that. That's why there's a repentance, a teshuv. You're turning yourself, you're altering yourself back to dust. You're coming to the place of bringing yourself to naught. You're becoming nothing for the Father for the Father, Yahuwah, Him in you to become everything. The reason why I'm saying this is because, I mean, we, uh, when I was going, and I'm still going through it, uh, Apostle Robert told me, Josh, study more than Marismos because you're going to learn to be broken and let brokenness be your portion so you know who you are. Right now, and as I was studying the notes, he was telling me, look at who you are right now. A house divided against itself. And I'm putting myself on blast because, not because I like to, not because I want to, but it's to show you who I am as a person. I'm not nobody special. I'm not nobody that has all that in a bag of chips. I'm just a, a servant of the Most High that the Father called me and says, now I'm calling you for, and calling you out from among the people Will you come up higher into knowing who I am in you? Because last time I checked, greater is he who is in me than who is in this world. So I just want to encourage you and to help you. Hebrews uh, chapter 4 verse 12 but uh, says, speaks about this uh, merismos, the separating of soul and spirit, the dividing asunder. But I want you to re, uh, go to... Uh, if you don't have the more word in you, you're going to be a, a completely divided, broken house all your life but yet the father gave you a promise for you to go through the process so you can learn how to prepare for his performance of the promise that he has given you romans chapter 4 verse 20 through 21 says and this is yahuwah's be uh actually let's turn there romans chapter 4 this is about our grand patriarch our grandpappy so to speak abraham and he sees this, he staggered not at the promise of Yahuwah through unbelief, but was strong in emunah, giving esteem and glory to Yahuwah, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And then, and this is in the merest most notes, so I'm speaking to myself too. So these verses place the responsibility on Yahuwah both for the promise and the performance. We need to wait for Yahuwah to perform rather than trying to make things our way as Abraham and Sarah did. And if you remember, Abraham had a son uh, with his maid, with uh, Sarah's maidservant and they had a, with a woman called Hagar. And then they had a, a false promise seed called Ishmael. You don't want to be in that realm where your soul is initiating and not waiting for Yahuwah to manifest the promise. And I've done that in several times to a point where I didn't allow the force of patience to work in me. So now here I am as a broken person to humbly say, even as you have seen me get uh, corrected on our Sabbath live stream about being intellectual, yes, it does get in the way. Because if you begin to see what I've gone through in life, I lean so much on intellect, on my own knowledge, on my own understanding. I never once at a point in my life, I leaned on him. But I came to seek the father at the age, whoop, I came to seek the father at the age of four. I had another experience when I was 16 where I said, Father, I'm tired of reading your word. 
as a fairy tale, as historical events, as just something, as a story just to go by and sleep. I want to encounter you. And when I began to pray for two, three, four hours within the day, he finally manifested himself in my room. And as he manifested himself, that's when I start, excuse me, that's when I started to feel the shift in my own being and my core of who I am. So yeah, there are many things in our lives that maybe we ha we need to go allow the word in us to process more in order for the promise to manifest in our lives this day. So remember, Abraham staggered not. So our problem is, is that <laughs> our own soul, which is the whole entire problem of the scenario, it has lack of commitment, lack of character, unfaithfulness, no reliability or dependability, no punctuality, inconsistency, and a general lack of the other, mis other uh, characteristics that reflect a man's life after he has built, been dealt with. So we all have that uncovering, unveiling of who we once were, the first Adam. But remember, you don't identify with the first Adam anymore. You identify as a son, Yeshua HaMashiach, whatever your name is. My name is Joshua Isaac Molara Mashiach. But when you begin to have that illumination and revelation that you are Mashiach, you are the son of Yahu a son of Yahuwah, remember, you're going to learn to see yourself seated in high places with Yahuwah. And as you see yourself seated in heavenly places, that's the word, you're going to begin to have your enemies become your footstool. So don't initiate, but wait on Yahuwah and wait for the promise to manifest in your life. Keep waiting. The word for uh, patience uh, is macro, macrothumia and hupomene. I'll put these words on the lower thirds for you and research them on your own time. And as you begin to research that, allow the words, the scriptures, the uh, Hebrews 4.12, allow the Psalms to continue to work mightily in you and allow the engrafted word that's able to save your soul work mightily in you. And you want to know how you begin to hear the Psalms more? Watch Let Isha Speak, hosted by Prophet Virginia Gonzalez, and she encourages you, each and every one of you, uh, on with the words of Yahuwah in Psalms and Proverbs. Amen? And we also have our Terabytes, hosted by Apostle Robert Gonzalez. He encourages you, equips you, and challenges you to become a threat, a terror, and a revenger to the truth. And we have our Sabbath live stream every Saturday from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. So get your pens, your papers ready to research those notes. And we have our, uh, our Sabbath live streams on rumble.com. So if you don't have time on YouTube and you click accidentally, you click out of your phone and you said, oh, I didn't save it. Rumble has a feature on uh, where you can play the Sabbath message even as your phone is locked. So until we see each other again, just want to thank you all, welcome you, and to in tune with the triune. Once again, my name is Elder Joshua Malara. So just here to encourage you, help you, and how to help you stay in tune with the triune Yahuwah. Until we see each other again, shalom, shalom, be baruch this day, this night, this evening, whatever time frame, whatever time zone you're watching. And until we see each other again, shalom.